Everyone who works on tankers is aware of the hazardous nature of their cargo. This includes crude oil carriers, product carriers, chemical tankers and gas ships. An important potential hazard on these ships is the task of entering enclosed spaces and we're going to look at this hazard first. The risks are threefold. First, suffocation due to lack of oxygen. Second, poisoning due to hydrocarbon vapour. And lastly, poisoning by any other toxic substances which could be present in the atmosphere. Any enclosed space on board which is not normally occupied should only be entered after the most thorough checks and using only the approved company procedure. The margin for error is very small. You can survive several weeks without food, several days without water, but only a few minutes without air, and only a few seconds in a toxic hydrocarbon atmosphere. Your company will have its own procedure for these entries. You must keep to it precisely. This procedure will include an entry permit signed by the master or the designated officer, an entry team of at least two, regular checking of gas levels in the enclosed space. These checks will consist of firstly the oxygen level, secondly the hydrocarbon gas level, and thirdly measuring the level of any other toxic gas that is likely to be present. There will be a need for continual mechanical ventilation before and during the entry. Breathing apparatus, safety and resuscitation equipment with trained personnel ready at the entry site. And last but not least, an effective chain of command with a watchman in place at the entry point with communications equipment. If any of the provisions in your company's procedure cannot be met, the entry must be postponed until it can be. Never be tempted to cut corners to save time. The risk is just too great. Ventilation should be continuous as long as anyone is in the space. Always be on your guard, even when tests have shown a tank to be safe. Pockets of gas could still be there, or scale could move, giving off fresh vapours. Never attempt to enter an enclosed space with an unconscious person inside, without breathing apparatus. It will only result in a further casualty, another person to be rescued. Never rely on your nose or on your luck. On a product carrier, tank cleaning of several tanks prior to taking a cargo of jet fuel was taking place. After the gas level was checked in one tank, the ventilating fans were moved to a second tank to speed up the work. An officer entered the first tank to complete the cleaning. His body was recovered 40 minutes later. Pump rooms contain large concentrations of cargo pipelines and mechanical equipment, so there's always the risk of leakage. You must keep to your company's entry procedure, which should include checking the atmosphere before entry. Ventilation must be fully operational for at least 15 minutes before any entry. It must continue as long as anyone is in the pump room and throughout cargo operations. Good housekeeping, proper maintenance of mechanical and electrical equipment and regular inspections are essential for pump room safety. Before any operation that involves opening up of pumps or valves, a detailed permit to work needs to be in place and the bridge must be fully informed. An officer should be present to ensure that the work site is completely safe. It pays to take great care in pump rooms. During cargo operations, it's always possible that petroleum vapours are present. These vapours are toxic and you must avoid breathing them. Your sense of smell can quickly become impaired by a persistent smell such as hydrocarbon vapour or hydrogen sulphide 
especially hydrogen sulfide. So if you know where the vapors are coming from, tell someone quickly. If any cargo gets on your skin, you should wash it off immediately. One of the greatest risks on tank ships is fire. Vapor from the cargo is flammable and surrounded by air, so fire prevention efforts are directed at eliminating the possibility of any heat source or spark that could cause ignition. Smoking materials are one possible source. Officers and crew are familiar with the restrictions on smoking and smoking equipment. These restrictions apply also to mobile telephones, pagers, cameras and any equipment that is not rated intrinsically safe. But every crew member must make it their business to ensure that all visitors to the ship are equally aware of the smoking regulations. Cargo vapor can get anywhere. Often heavier than air, it can move around the structures of the ship, making it difficult to predict where it will go. So always work on the assumption that vapor is nearby you on deck. Sparks are another possible source of ignition. So to avoid this risk, only intrinsically safe electrical equipment must be used on deck and in tanks. It's essential to check thoroughly that this equipment is in good condition and that the insulation is intact before you use it. Great care needs to be taken with all metal tools so that they're not dropped. Any hot work must conform precisely to the permit to work issued for it. You must follow the restrictions to the letter, even if it means more time and trouble. The conditions have been imposed for your own safety and the safety of everyone on board. Deck plating was being repaired on the deck of an oboe on a ballast passage. Everyone assumed that the tanks were inerted, but the proper procedures had not been followed. The tanks were not inert. There was an explosion, resulting in two fatalities. Another potential source of sparks is static electricity. A static charge can build up by pumping petroleum products through pipelines, tank washing with water or products, and tank steaming. If an unearthed metal object is put in this field, it can cause a spark. However, the charge will dissipate in time, so the tank must be left for at least 30 minutes, and possibly longer, to reduce this risk. So always make certain that allerging tapes are properly earthed if tank washing has taken place recently. If in doubt, wait. As a result of the safety measures taken by every well-managed ship, fires are comparatively rare. The most common type of accidents are slips, falls and cuts. So always take care when you're walking around the deck, especially at night. Your first line of defense against these troublesome personal injuries is your protective clothing. Always wear the right personal protective equipment, boots, hard hats, coverall and gloves at all times. More complete equipment when needed. Check the data sheet to see if the cargo needs particular safety precautions. Keep a constant lookout for any oil spill or leaks. Even a small spill can be a major hazard. As well as polluting, it can lead to fire, breathing problems and slips and falls. Above all, think carefully about the safety aspects of what you're doing. Never be tempted or persuaded to skimp on safety to save time. Make sure that you know what equipment you need to protect yourself from the toxic effects of the cargo. Remember that fast discharge and loading rates, as well as tidal flow, can change the ship's situation. Moorings, hoses and gangways will all need to be checked. Hello, again. Can I turn on the light? Yeah, you can do the lights and if, when you finish the lights, have a quick check round of all the ropes and make sure they're, they're OK, please. OK. Thanks a lot. Safety is the foundation of all procedures on a tanker. Never be afraid to point out a potential problem to anyone.
Always remember your training, and for your own protection, as well as that of the ship and your fellow seafarers, take the time to follow the correct procedures in whatever task you're doing.